So I am here at Chicago Discus. I'm very excited to go through and talk with the owner, discuss what's going on here, and just give a really cool tour of these discus. You ready to get into it? We're ready. <laughs> My first question is just how did you get into discus and kind of importing them and just the business in general? How did that start? Oh, how did that start? Well, first of all, the business is owned by myself, uh, I'm Miranda, and Josephine Christopher, my, my niece. Josie was really the, the fish the fish person. Uh, I wasn't really into it until she started she started me on it. When we when we bought this house together. She set up a fairly large aquarium. I was actually on the, on the top floor. This is an old, old Chicago house, and getting a big aquarium up to the third floor was a job. Uh, but she, uh, she brought in some discus. And th that was probably, I would say, about maybe 17 years ago. And we got into it, we got into it together. I don't think she had discus before that. She certainly had other fish, but she didn't have discus. And that's how we got into it. I love that. And can you explain a little bit about how you get these discus? You mentioned earlier that you import them. We import them. When we started, let me let me back up. When we started, uh, she brought in these fish, and they started breeding. And we said, well, let's breed these discus. So we set up a few breeding tanks. And we got some baby discus, and we took them to um, the Greater Chicago Sickle Association swap meet, and we started selling baby discus. People got excited about them. We got our name out there. We, we, we incorporated the Chicago Discus. And we were planning to just breed. But the business kind of outgrew our ability to breed, so we started importing. Right now, we're importing from Malaysia. We're working specifically with Robert Lim, who owns a business over there called Unique Discus. He has uh, several farms. And uh, all the fish that you see here are Robert Lim discus. And obviously that's top quality just looking around at some of the discus. That's one of the best locations to import from. Malaysia I think is the the capital of discus breeding and the Lim family has been doing discus for generations. Robert himself has been breeding for thir for over 30 years. Wow. And you also mentioned when you import you get a big package and it looks like you're stock pretty full of discus at the moment. Yeah, that's um, right. Right now you came at a perfect time <laughs> because we just got this shipment in on Friday and every tank we have here is full. And uh, what we do is we try to fill up all the tanks and then as, as we get empty tanks we start planning the next shipment and uh, then we fill them up again. And I like how you label each tank with either red or blue depending on fish that are ready to be sold or fish that are just recently brought in, right? It keeps us straight for my, for my own, uh, for, for the ease of telling customers, okay, look at the red fish, or the labels that are red. You can take them home today, but the ones that are blue, they're, they're still in quarantine. When we get, Whoa. Oh, that, <laughs> that's, 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 uh, that's uh, Sky, that's, uh, that's our mascot. Yeah, when we get them in, we keep them in quarantine for 10 days. That's awesome, and that prevents any type of issues from customers, and you make sure that the fish are super healthy healthy and ready to go. This is our big 300-gallon display tank. We have some of the most valuable fish in here. Everything in here, all the discus are for sale, but we have other fish in there with them. It kind of shows people what kind of fish you can uh, keep with discus. We have... We have ton of different plecos, uh, but they're not for sale. <laughs> but the smaller plecos are fine with discus, just don't get those big common black plecos. They, they, get, they will outgrow your discus and they're, they're really a mess. But rummy nose tetras and cardinal tetras are the best to have with discus. Usually if you get a, a school of maybe a, a hundred rummy nose and a hundred cardinals, and they'll, they'll stay together, they'll swim in schools around the discus. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Corridors are wonderful fish to keep with, with the discus. Um, we're actually trying out these these uh, Ju Julie the Chromas uh, cichlids. Uh, they're not they're not river fish. They're lake fish, but they they seem to be doing okay with the discus. Some of these fish, this one in particular, that's that's called a, uh, uh, a meteor eruption. 
It's one of Robert's, Robert and specialties. It's like a $400 fish. And what temperature do you typically keep them at? <clears throat> this tank is set at 82, okay? It's a little bit at the low end, but we, we set it at 82 because we have the cichlids in there, which are used to a lower temperature. But I would keep my discus anywhere from 82 to 86. And generally, what do you feed these guys or recommend feeding discus? We make our own food. Uh, we make we make a, a beef heart mix. Uh, it's about 80% beef heart. And we mix that with shrimp, salmon, spinach, bananas. It, it's a wonderful mix. And I actually have the recipe online at our, at our website, which is chicagodiscus.com. And you also mentioned the website. Can you explain how people can either pick up discus or buy them from you? Sure, sure. Uh, go to chicagodiscus.com and you will find uh, a shopping page and all the discus that we have for sale are listed on the shopping page and usually we'll take uh, tank shots of the discus. They're not stock pictures but they're, they're actual pictures of the fish that we have in stock. We have way too many fish to take pictures of every fish so typically we will take eight to ten pictures of representative discus, discus from the tanks. Uh, you, can, you can click on the strain. You can order as many as you want just by putting them in the shopping cart. Uh, it'll calculate shipping for you and we'll ship them to you. Or you can stop in at the shop yourself if you're in the Chicago area and we'll be glad to sell them to you right at the shop. And do you have to set an appointment to come view the discus? You do. Cool. We're, we're open from 10 to 5 but I would appreciate it if, <laughs> if you would give me a call ahead of time to make sure that I'm here. Makes sense. Do you have any favorite discus that you want to show us or talk about? Well, the, my first favorite is, <laughs> is the one of this, this main tank here. These are, these are called coral red, coral red discus. Coral red discus are a type of, of uh, red white discus, but these are especially beautiful ones with very clear demarcations between the white and the red. I love these fish. The, uh, I always think of them as an impressionist painting. The, uh, the red looks like someone took a paintbrush and just kind of splattered it on the background of white. Looks like they were painted. These rose reds are very popular. I didn't get very many. I did. They're very large fish. They're about six inches. But people do like them. These are my most expensive fish. These are, these are Robert Lim's specialty. Uh, they, are, they are the Red Ruby Spiders and the Super Pantheras. Is there a reason they're so expensive? Eruption Leopard Snake Skins are, are very popular. You know, it started with the Penang Eruptions, and I have some Penang Eruptions in the back there. But the finest Eruption Leopard Snake Skins are the ones where the, the pattern is fully covering the body, including the face, and a beautiful facial pattern. You'll see a lot of the more common eruptions. The pattern tends to blur out as they get towards the face. But with these, if you could get a close-up of these, of these super pantheras, they have extremely fine dotted pattern. And the pattern totally covers the face, so they have a beautiful spotted face. Right up to the right up to the front of the face. Would you want to check out the back of the room there and talk Absolutely. through some of those discus? Absolutely. That's 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 where we started over at the back where we set up the racks like a store. Okay, these are our, our our racks. I mean as you can see we have we have dozens of varieties. But I arranged them by by color. I just thought I just thought it really makes it very attractive. So we have these bright red Fuji reds down at the bottom right here. Contrasted with these beautiful blue diamonds up above. Okay, try to always have blue diamonds, Fuji reds. We we tend to try to have some sort of pigeon blood. This time we have we have a more unusual type of pigeon pigeon blood, which is a super checkerboard snakeskin pigeon blood. We then mix that up with some leopards. And, and Robert Lim's specialty is spotted fish. Uh, but I try to get different kinds of leopards each time. And this, this leopard's called a Sakura leopard. These are called Goldens. 
and with the lighting that I have right on them right now, so they look more orange than gold, contrasting with these beautiful deep blue cobalts. Flora turquoise in the top tank. And they're called flora because it's kind of, it's a maze pattern, uh, but sometimes they call it a carnation turquoise. And then down at the bottom we have another type of pigeon blood, which is called a red map. The patterns don't connect to form checkerboard patterns, but are more all over the place like a map. I really like those. These are some of the best red maps we've had. And yeah. these here are the albino platinums? These are the albino platinums. These are some of the, uh, the finest pure white fish that, you, that you're going to find. There's another kind of discus called snow white, which people think is white, but it's, it's actually will pick up the colors from the food and over time will become kind of yellowish. Mm -hmm. will, never, will never yellow. And the reason is in their skin they have white crystals and that's why they're kind of shimmery and, and white and they'll stay white their whole life. Pure white. They're, they're pure white fish. Beautiful. And then over in the far left, I see some discus that maybe I'll pick up today. Um, I really like the golden checkerboards, the leopards. Also a pretty good, a smaller size than some of the other discus, which will fit in my tank, I think. Well, that's, that's good for you. It's, it's fun to watch them grow out. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for giving us a behind the scenes tour here. I'm ready to maybe uh, pick out a few fish and and hit the road. Great. I'll be glad to pack them up for you. Awesome. Thanks and again. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Trey. These are, these are your fish, and we're using our polyclip system. So here is your beautiful albino leopard, double bag. When I'm shipping, I use, uh, I actually use triple bags with a, with a very thick bag liner oxygen. inner clip, outer clip, and there you go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I got my new discus home. They are floating right now and in the next video I'm going to be adding them to this tank showing you what I got. I'm also going to be adding new discus tank mates to this tank so it's going to be an awesome video you won't want to miss. Thanks again to Chicago Discus for that awesome behind the scenes tour and thank you for watching. See you next time.